The Wild Super Tramp, in my opinion, is the perfect example of a modern ATB. But what is an ATB? Should you get one? And what do I think of this bike? Mountain bikes today have evolved into very specialized descending machines with full suspension and ultra slack geometries. On the other end of the spectrum, we have road bikes, which have evolved into super aggressive go fast machines at the expense of utility, AKA mounting points and comfort. Gravel bikes sort of bridge the gap for curly bar bikes, but as time goes on, they are becoming more road bike adjacent. This isn't to say that it's necessarily a bad thing. If you're riding on either end of the spectrum, then you're pretty well served. However, what if you don't want something that is on either end of the spectrum? What if you want something with the chops to take some dirt roads and trails, but doesn't feel all weird and floopy floppy when you're just riding on a plain old road? Then my friends, I think what you and I are after is an ATB much like the Wild Super Tramp, a bike that captures the versatility of a 90s mountain bike pre-suspension with some of the benefits from modern componentry. And just to get nomenclature straight, an ATB is short for all-terrain bike. As per lore, it was a term to refer to the emerging mountain bikes uh, without saying the word mountain bike because the phrase mountain bike was trademarked by Richie. So anyways, today, how I use the term ATB, others may vary. I'm not gonna give you a whole manifesto about it. Uh, I use it to refer to modern bikes that capture the simplicity and versatility of those pre-suspension 90s mountain bikes. And I think the Wild Super Tramp is a bike that hits that note perfectly. Wild is a newish company, but the founder, Jeff Frayne, uh, has been in the bike industry for a while. He actually started the brand All City. The Super Tramp is his first production frame, and I think it captures the ethos of an ATB perfectly. It is a bike that is ready for adventure with all the mounts and big tire clearance, but its geometry isn't so extreme in the downhill bike direction that you feel kind of dumb and floopy floppy when you're riding around town. The frame and segmented fork are steel. It has three pack mounts, mid blade mounts, internal routing for dynamo hubs, as well as double eyelets so you can run both racks and fenders. This particular build has Avid BB7s, uh, Stan's S2 flow wheels. The fork will clear 29 by 2.8 tires and the frame has clearance for 29 by 2.6 tires. The bike I rode is running the Ultra Dynamico 29 by 2.3 tires. The complete bike, although a little bit on the spinnier side, does come with some nice parts that I think justify the price. First off, you've got Wolf Tooth made in the USA headset, as well as a made in the USA Thompson seat post and stem. The bars on this one are Jones bars. I think the spec on the complete are the VO Sane bars, which I think I would prefer uh, better just because it has more versatility in terms of mounting bags. And I know already someone is typing in the comments, what do you mean I have a Jones bar and I use XXX bag? Look, it works great for sausage bags. It kind of sucks for bags that open on the top. So think randonuring bags or a Caradise style bag. Yes, you can make it work, it is not the best. In terms of the drivetrain, it's Rockin' SRAM GX, which works fine. Moving back to the rear, again, you've got mounting points for racks and the fender. So a whole bunch of utility with this bike. I know what you're thinking, Russ, I can read uh, beyond the spec sheet. How does a bike actually ride? Is it spicy, is it jumpy, does it tread? Well, it sort of rides like a bike and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The handling to me falls right in the middle. It's not super twitchy like a road bike. It's not super slack feeling like a modern mountain bike. It's just kind of a neutral handling bike. I think personally, it leans definitely more towards the stable and smooth side in the handling spectrum. The relatively long rear chainstay at 440 uh, translates into a smooth descender putting the wheel more behind you than right under your butt. The flip side, of course, is that it doesn't have that same jumpiness and responsiveness of a super short chainstay bike. Similar to the rear, the front end was super predictable and intuitive. You don't have to telegraph the turns with a lot of body English like a super progressive mountain bike. And at the same time, it definitely wasn't twitchy like a racing gravel bike or a road bike. To me, it definitely feels more confident descending than let's say your typical race gravel bike uh, because of the higher trail but also because of the longer top tube, uh, shorter stem and swept back bar configuration that puts your hand slightly behind the steering axis. This just makes it a lot more comfortable and more predictable when descending. The trail is high-ish for a road bike at 80, but still much lower than a downhill mountain bike. I know if you've drank uh, the Yon Kool-Aid, 
high trail equals bad. But I don't think that is the case with bikes designed with an alt bar or a flat bar in mind. That drunken goatiness that I talk about when riding a high trail bike, that's totally mitigated by the wider handlebar and by placing your hand at or behind the steering axis. I think high trail gets unwieldy uh, in drop bar bikes that have high trail just because your weight is cantilevered more forward of the steering axis. But in a bike like this, it completely balances out. So in my opinion, it's a total blast. It makes a great all-rounder. Uh, think of it as a Jones bike uh, that's been shrunk down just a bit. I know a bunch of you are already typing, well, that's just a X bike. So I'm gonna to try to address some of that. Uh, compared to the hardtack, it's very similar vibes. The hardtack, however, was designed with drop bars in mind. This bike in comparison has a much longer top tube because it's anticipating running a shorter stem and a bar with some kind of sweep back. The Super Tramp also has slightly shorter chainstays, so it does feel a little bit quicker, a little bit more nimbler all around, but it's within the same ballpark. Compared to something like the Karate Monkey, this definitely has longer reach, uh, more stack. It's not suspension corrected like the Kar Karate Monkey. And this is more of a feature, not a bug. This was designed with bike packing in mind, so it's trying to maximize that frame bag space. To mention the Karate Monkey also has much shorter chainstays, so different handling bike. Compared to something like the Gorilla Monsoon, once again, the Gorilla Monsoon was designed with drop bars in mind. So this one in comparison has a much longer uh, top tube, longer chainstay, higher trail. So again, not quite a one-to-one. -one. Compared to the Ghost Grappler, which I also reviewed, again, I think these bikes handle night and day difference. Uh, biggest difference would be the shorter chain stays on the Ghost Grappler. That bike definitely has that jumpier, spicier feel to it. And then, and then once again, this bike has longer reach, longer chain stay, higher trail. Compared to some generic hardtail, it's really hard to say, but again, one big feature of this bike is that it's not suspension corrected. This bike will likely have a higher stack and also a lower trail number than a full-blown mountain bike. If, if you're wondering what this bike is or is not like, just use Bike Insights. Okay, pros and cons. Lots of pros here. Uh, it is a great uh, freshman production frame from Wild. I think Jeff's industry experience really shows, you know, it's beautiful looking, it's nicely specced, just like his aesthetics, with All City, uh, you kind of get custom bike vibes, but for production bike money. Talking about the specs, there's not a whole lot I would change uh, on this bike, except for maybe the brakes. I'd swap them out to something like the Grotax or some Paul Clampers, but definitely still staying a uh, mechanical disc. So if, if there are any cons, uh, you know, the price could be an issue uh, for some, in particular the Complete, although I think the frame set only is fairly competitive with other brands out there on the market. On Parish with a crust, more than Surly or other brands from bigger distributors, there's a lot that goes into pricing. I imagine Jeff isn't ordering at the same scale uh, as he was when he worked at All City, so that's naturally gonna bring uh, the price of frames up. Do I like it? Um, I mean, if this bike were out last year when I was hunting for my ATB, I probably would have bought this instead of the hardtack. And not because the hardtack is a bad bike. The hardtack is similar, but it was built with drops in mind. And, and at the time I was shopping for a bike uh, for alt bars specifically. And I think this bike would have been a better fit uh, for, for that. Just as the Space Horse was a perfect all-rounder in the drop bar curly bike world, I think the Wild Super Tramp brings that same sensibility to the alt bike ATB world. If you guys found this video helpful or entertaining, please consider supporting the channel by buying some stickers. We still have a few caps left or our new party pay shirts. Uh, all the links in the description below. And as always, keep the supple side down.